All right, hi again, welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondra and we are talking in this video about innocent infringement. Okay, with copyright law going crazy and you gotta know what's going on. You're trying to defend yourself against claims of software piracy, torrent, illegal movie downloads, things like that. You gotta know innocent infringement and how to prove it. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, here we go. All right, so wow, there's a lot of stuff up here, right? But let's just take this real easy. Let's focus on the chart here, okay? This is what I call our copyright damages chart for you visual learners that like to see it. You know, I always, in law school, I always wish, why doesn't the, uh, the professor go up and write on the board? Like, I want to see what they're thinking. Well, I write it out for you, okay? Because I'm a visual learner kind of guy. So here's our copyright law chart, okay? Now, there's different levels of infringement. So let's say you're accused of um, pirating software, or let's say you're accused of photo infringement. This is a huge one, okay? Let's say you're accused of illegal movie downloads with company like Strike 3 Holdings or Malibu Media, two prolific filers of copyright infringement cases in the federal courts in the United States. Your first instinct may be, well, look, I wasn't trying to infringe anybody's copyrights. Uh, I, you know, I had no idea. Like, I don't, I didn't take a class in, in copyright law. They didn't teach me this in, in high school. It wasn't, wasn't part of my civics class. I didn't, they didn't teach me in college about copyright law. I don't even know what intellectual property is. But nevertheless, the courts have de developed a way to try to figure out what the plaintiff or the copyright rights holder is entitled to and the defendant is able to make arguments to try to lower the damages. Now, this is the worst place you can be, okay, as a, as a copyright defendant. Willful infringement. Willful infringement can include willful, you intended to infringe somebody's copyright, or what we call reckless, reckless disregard of whether or not this, this uh, content that, let's say, that you're using is copyrighted so it can be it's not only willful which is a pretty high level to prove but also kind of turning a blind eye as we say sticking your head in the ground and going yeah who cares we'll figure it out later so if you're found guilty this is statutory damages okay this is not actual damages a copyright plaintiff gets to elect which one they want okay and it's usually whichever one amounts to the most Sometimes it's actual damages, sometimes it's statutory damages. A lot of times in photo infringement, torrent cases that we're dealing with, software piracy cases, it's usually they're seeking some form of statutory damages. So that's what we're talking about. If it's actual damages and it's $10 million in actual damages, okay, well, they're just going to take actual damages, no question. But we're talking about when we're over here in the world of statutory damages, this is the worst place you can be, okay? That's why it's the biggest on my chart. We're going, we're getting to the better as a defendant, okay? So, this is thirty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per infringed title, thirty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So yeah, that's an enormous number. So of course you don't want to be associated with this. You want to be able to convince the judge or the jury that you're over here. But let's talk about what is willful and reckless, turning a blind eye, certain things like let's say you have, and I'm going to just check this off so you can go along with me here. Let's say there was a notice of copyright like this here. There's a copyright notice. Well, of course. How can you say, well, you know, I didn't know. There was a copyright notice. That's not going to get you very far. That's probably going to land you over here willful and reckless, okay? Not where you want to be. Potential thirty dollars to $150,000 statutory award, not even including the attorney fees, their attorney fees, and, and probably your attorney fees if you're defending a case. So think about that. Um, if you're experienced in copyright, if, if they can prove that you've done a lot of licensing transactions, that you buy a lot of stock photos, for example, um, it's kind of weird. Like, you buy stock photos, why didn't you buy it here? So looking at your experience level, your sophistication level, um, efforts to hide, and I put here 1202. Okay, that's under the copyright law. This is copyright management information. This is like things like the copyright or this photographer is, is Susie Q, okay? And when you're trying to hide that and crop your photos and images and get that out of there, 
that evidence of hiding can be seen as willful and reckless, okay? And these are, this is not an exclusive list, by the way. This is general legal information only, not an exclusive list. This is not legal advice. Some things you need to be thinking about, though. Contractual obligations. If it says in your contract you need to do this or you need to license, make sure you're licensing all photos, well, somebody put you on notice of your obligations and you're not fulfilling them. So that could get you right over here into willful. So this is just a short list. We go over those. That's a short list, but... Those are some important ones, okay? So if you end up here, the courts may be looking to thirty to 150000 How do the courts figure out, or the jury, how do they figure out? Because you do have a right to a jury trial. This is a question of fact as to your state of mind and what, what is appropriate here. It's a jury trial question, okay? Jury gets to decide. Sometimes you have a judge as the uh, trier of fact. But nonetheless, how do they figure out is it, do I award 30,000 or do I award 80,000 or do I award 125 or 150? How do they look? There's several different factors. There's case law. There's things that we can use to guide us. Um, one would be the state of the mind. You know, is somebody just out there recklessly trying to infringe copyrights? They don't care. They're going to look to the state of the mind. This comes right over here with punish and deter. These statutory damages are designed in sense to punish and de de deter, prevent them from doing again, a bad defendant, a bad actor, okay? That's gonna be a factor in figuring out what the, the amount is. Is the amount reasonably related to the actual damages? There is case law on this that said, well, you don't just pick 150 when they're out, 25 bucks. This is your photo infringement cases, okay? You have these the photographers, some works are real basic, picture of a building. Wow, really, really unbelievable, right? And you have other really high level photography cases, very different. We all know the difference. Um, but your damages, your statutory damages, even if it's willful, needs to be reasonably related to the actual damages suffered. So if you never licensed a photo, I mean, it's hard for you to come in, into court and think you're going to get $150,000 plus attorney fees. It's not very realistic, but some of these factors are going to be weighed. But these are things you need to argue, things you need to bring to the surface, okay, when you're being hauled in as a defendant in a copyright case. Uh, punishing and deter, and also very big, expenses saved and the profits received by the infringer, okay? How much did they make? How much did they save? And a lot of times in software cases, this will come up, well, they'll say, well, you got 10 licenses on your shop floor. Each license is $20,000. You saved $200,000 by not licensing our, our stuff. So that may, that may justify a $150,000 reward for statutory damages. It may be better for them to go look at actual damages. So you can see how this is playing in. All right, so we've gone through all this. That's great. Now... If between here and here, let's go over here, is innocent, okay? Let's go from here to here to innocent. Now, there is case law that says innocence can come down to $200, $200. That's quite a difference from thirty dollars and $150,000. So you want to know, what does it take to prove that? How do I get there? How do I convince a judge or jury? Question of fact. How do I convince them? What are the factors? So innocent infringement is what you really want to try to argue in. Let's take a look at this real. Now, the defendant, and I put here the defendant must prove. This is not, this is not something left to the plaintiff to prove or disprove. The defendant that's asserting innocent must prove. You must prove you're innocent. I know that's different from um, criminal law. Well, everybody's presumed innocent. It doesn't work that way in copyright law. Okay, so the defendant must prove. Let's take a look at the factors here. Let's just call that factors. One, that they were not aware, subjectively not aware. This is a subjective test. Any, any of my law students out there, you know we have subjective tests and we have objective tests. This is the state of the mind of the infringer, the, the defendant's state of mind. Is subjectively, did they believe that there was no copyright, so they didn't know it was copyrighted, okay? Two, that no reason, they had no reason to believe 
that it was copyrighted. They had no reason to inquire. They, they didn't know. They're not sophisticated. Now, this has to be objectively reasonable. That means the reasonable person. You know, my law, my law school peeps out there, the reasonable person, right? That's who we're always talking about. Nobody really knows what it is, but it's kind of what we're supposed to be. So your subjective belief has to be objectively reasonable, and you have to have no reason to believe the acts constituted infringement, okay? There's your test. How do you prove it? There's all kinds of case law. Here's a couple factors I'm gonna point out real quick to you. So let's check the boxes here. We're going through it fast. One, let's say you trusted and relied on legal counsel. This is why you always wanna, I tell people, you know, get your legal opinions in advance before you do something. They'll say, oh, well, it costs money. I say, well, yeah, it costs a lot more money if you end up here in a lawsuit. This is really where it's gonna hit you in the pocketbook. But if you relied on counsel, you have a legal opinion. Let's say it's fair use. You say, well, I went and showed, I showed this picture that I was going to post on my blog. It was totally editorial. It was news. It was public affairs. Um, I was commenting and criticizing the photo, or it was a parody. And you get an opinion letter. That's going to help you argue that it's innocent. I did everything I could. My counsel told me otherwise. Okay, maybe that's a case of malpractice. We don't want to talk about that here, but that's one thing. But here's another thing, and I'm going to show you a case on this, which I thought was really interesting. And I think this is really important in those software piracy cases where you have these little shops, these kind of startup shops. Um, I mean, obviously, our country is evolving. It's changing. We have a lot of immigrants. Uh, yes, we're all immigrants. I, I agree. I get it. Um, but we have a lot of unsophisticated immigrants, people that may not be familiar with our laws in our country and the, the workings of copyright and statutory damages schemes and all these things. Believe it or not, there is case law where the courts can take this into account. The case I'm going to tell you is the DC Comics case, and I'm going to read it to you real quick. But the court in this case said, we can look at if the defendant, the alleged infringer, is unsophisticated or maybe doesn't speak English. You know, maybe there is a way where we need to say, well, maybe this is more innocent in nature as opposed to willful. Okay. So I've got the DC case here, my handy, my handy chip clip or whatever you want to call it. But let's take a look about uh, some of the language in here real quick. I'm going to try to be quick here. But this dealt with some flea market vendors and... Um, where did I put my glasses here? All right, let's take a look here. Got to get my glasses on. So this dealt with some flea market vendors. This is out of the Second Circuit. That's the New York area. This is DC Comics, Inc. versus Mini Gift Shop. Uh, citation is 912 Federal 2nd 29, and this is in 1990. But this was some flea market vendors who were alleged to be infringing on certain Warner copyrights. And the district court found that the defendants had infringed on Warner's copyrights, but that any infringement was innocent. The finding was based, in fact, on the court's determination that each of the defendants did not have the sophistication or level of understanding to move them to make an inquiry. So they didn't have enough knowledge to move them to make an inquiry, to move them to come seek counsel to uh, figure out where they're at here, okay? So it's really, it's really an important case, and I think you know these cases need to be pot brought out to your plaintiff counsel who are trying to, they're always trying to say, it's willful, it's reckless, it's 150, it's attorney fees. I mean, they'll hammer you on this, trust me, and this has to be hammered back on them, okay? This case is a good one, so you just got a citation on that. Um, the finding was based, in fact, uh, for the purpose of the, the court had found, in light of the lack of intent to violate the copyright laws, an injunction and $200 in statutory damages would sufficiently deter any possibility of future um, infringements. That's what we're talking about, state of the mind, deterrence, those kinds of things. All the factors are coming in here. Um, court said many of these defendants did not speak any English. Okay, so they're talking about the unsophisticated um, plaintiff. And um, I'm going to go just into the important part 
here, very short. The mere, ap the mere absence of a copyright mark is not sufficient to establish innocent infringement. So you can't just say, judge, there was no mark. Happens all the time. Um, of course, if the defendant had reason to believe the goods were copyrighted and unlicensed, the reduction of statutory damages for innocent infringement requires an inquiry, inquiry into the defendant's state of mind to determine whether he or she was not aware and had no reason to believe that his or acts constituted infringement. That's what we're talking about here. The court determined that the defendants who appeared at the hearing and trial lacked the sophistication or level of understanding to prompt an inquiry into the source of the unmarked goods. The court had a short colloquy with each pro se defendant at the state of the hearing. At the start of the hearing, plaintiff's own evidence established that the defendants were unsophisticated merchants. The level of sophistication of the defendant's business is an entirely proper means of determining whether or not his infringement was innocent. Did you catch that? The level of sophistication of the defendant in business is an entirely proper means of calculating whether or not his infringement was innocent. Okay, so this is something that can be raised. Um, there is case law on it. Some people may say, well, that's not justice is blind. I thought everybody was presumed to know the law. It's one court looking at the facts, trying to do justice. Remember, um, trying to do justice. So. These are arguments that you will use over here. Where's my green pen? These are arguments that you will use to try to reduce your reward down to $200, but it can still go up to a maximum of 30,000, the discretion laying there, okay? So just because it's innocent doesn't mean it's 200, it can still go up higher, okay? So we're getting right through all this. Look at this. We got question of fact, jury trial. We got that out. Uh, we've got innocent. That's what you're going to try to prove. And if it, if nobody can prove anything, it's probably going to end up in here: seven hundred and fifty dollars per infringed title to thirty thousand. What we call non-willful, right in between. Okay? Do you see how that works? Pretty simple. Who's breaking it down for you here? AttorneySteve.com breaking it down for you. Okay? Now there are other. I just want you to to realize. I'm not going to go into this, but. 17 U.S.C. 504, C as in Charlie, 2, I as in credible, no statutory damages for libraries, nonprofit educationals where they have reasonable belief in the fair use, okay? Um, but that's down here where you're paying no statutory damages, okay? That's the best you can do. That's the worst you can do. So there you have it. If you have any more questions, you know where to find me, attorneysteve.com, the copyright attorney, bringing you all the news that you can use and I uh, hope you enjoy this. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Don't be afraid to subscribe so you can be smarter than everyone on your block, even some of your attorney friends who don't know this stuff. So, but I hope, uh, thank you guys for watching. We're getting close to 15,000 subscribers now. I really appreciate your viewership, and we'll be back this week with some more great videos. Until then, have a great evening, stay safe, and have fun with your loved ones, okay? We'll see you again. Attorney Steve, out. Bye.